Three, fatal flaws by the Fed. These are huge reasons to be in gold and silver. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. So on my world tour of one ounce gold coins from Major Mints, I did take a quick little detour back up to Canada, <laughs> virtually that is, <laughs> to pick up a quarter ounce gold maple leaf for 1% over spot. I thought that was an extremely good deal. I was very happy about it. And you do need to be opportunistic when it comes to your stacking. By the way, a quarter ounce is the minimum I like to stack under normal premiums due to the uh, extra cost of fractional gold. A one-tenth or one-twentieth of an ounce of gold can be awfully tempting to buy, but if you can wait just a little bit longer for at least a quarter ounce, I think it's well worth it in my opinion. A half ounce or full ounce is even better, but that can be out of reach for many people. So the target of a quarter ounce, I think, is the sweet spot. So uh, this one's not going to fit into the uh, maple musket. That's already filled up, but I just had to pick this up. Hey, before I go any further, please hit the like button. I'm going to share the three fatal flaws I think the Fed is making and why I think that makes it an almost no-brainer to be stacking precious metals. But people need to hear this. So if you hit the like button, that really helps the algorithm in YouTube and gets the word out. And I really do appreciate it. So what's the first fatal flaw? I think it's the Federal Reserve dropping whatever independence they may have once had and getting into bed with government. This is the final of three phases a central bank makes before a reset occurs. The first step? is dropping rates to zero. That happened back in 1932 during the Great Depression. It happened again with the global financial crisis. But that soon doesn't do enough to stimulate a fake economy. And when I say fake economy, I mean an economy that doesn't actually produce anything, doesn't create anything, doesn't reinvest in production that people then can consume, but no, it's based on consumption alone. The second step is debt monetization, printing currency, buying financial assets. This can start with U.S. government debt on the short end of the yield curve, like treasuries. But that quickly expands and can become all kinds of debt, like municipal debt, uh, corporate debt even. This again only happened in 1932 and in 2008-2009. The last step is that loss of any pretense of what the Federal Reserve was initially intended to be, independent. They had a mandate to expand and contract the money supply to help ensure stable consumer prices. Stable, okay, not 2% every year stable consumer prices. That was its initial mandate. World War I was the reason that the Fed was temporarily allowed to monetize debt, you know, buy and hold U.S. treasuries. People back then hated the thought of the government and the central bank being in bed with each other. They didn't want the federal government to use the central bank the way it's using it right now. They, in fact, they would never have passed the Federal Reserve Act if they knew that that was coming. They changed the way the Federal Reserve Act was written to allow the Fed to buy and hold treasuries in the market. Now, what do we got? $8 trillion on the Fed's balance sheet? So the pretense is way over. Eventually, modern monetary theory, MMT, it's going to merge the balance sheets of the Federal Reserve with the Treasury. And the government will then have total control over the printing press. So that's the first 
fatal flaw by the Fed, reaching that last step of backstopping fiscal policy coming out of the Congress. The second fatal flaw by the Fed is this ludicrous statement that I keep hearing over and over again from Jerome Powell and others that this inflation we're feeling right now is transitory, meaning short-lived. I don't buy it. Now, of course, the CPI might not be as hot as what we're seeing right now. I think it was, what, 0.6% in just May? I mean, come on. This is going to be a horrible inflationary year if that persists. But I don't think even they believe that it's truly transitory. Currency printing is inflation. The manipulated consumer price index at CPI is just the result. Remember, prices don't inflate. Okay, prices go up or down. It is money supply that inflates and deflates. They've expanded the money supply by eight times. Eight since the global financial crisis. And our debt has tripled. And guys, don't give me the argument that inflation means nothing without velocity. I think it's time for us to rethink what velocity is and how it's going to be realized. I'm going to do a different video on velocity all, all by itself, but I really doubt that velocity matters as much as we think it does. So the flaw, the second flaw, is really thinking that this inflation isn't going to get out of hand. The third fatal flaw is the Fed's claim that they will simply deal with the crisis with their tools if necessary. Really. I believe that's disingenuous at best and a flat out lie at worst. They won't raise rates. They won't stop bond purchases when inflation goes wild. Why? Because they can't. Their tools of raising rates and tapering are not going to be used. And the markets are wrong to think they are going to use them. Because here's the dirty little secret. The stock market and the real estate markets are in charge of the central banks. They control them, not the other way around. No, if the Fed does anything, it will be capping long-term rates and buying up all the corporate and municipal bonds that they can get their hands on. That's the third fatal flaw. And I think all those flaws are insanely bullish for silver and gold, especially gold as a monetary metal. Silver also, it's definitely uh, a more speculative play and it follows gold usually. But you need to be stacking silver and gold because of these incredibly stupid fatal flaws that the Fed is making. Maybe the markets are going to finally start realizing that the Fed is feckless here and can't do what they say they're not going to do. All right. <laughs> it's amazing. They keep telling the markets we're not going to do this and the markets just don't want to believe them. Well, I think they're going to very soon, but we shall see, right? Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. I know a lot of you out there watch my videos and haven't subscribed yet. I would appreciate it if you do. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay. Check this out. Thank you so much, Joshua. I love this.